Another episode of my weekly self-defense analysis, and today I'm going to be talking to you about um, why Muay Thai will get you killed in self-defense. Um, now, in this video, I'm not saying that, or with any video, I'm not saying that any martial arts will never work in a real life situation. All I'm saying is that um, in most situations, it fails. Um, yeah, you'll hear about cases where Muay, uh, Muay Thai fighter will knock out maybe one or two thugs, but overall, um, you look at the cases where Muay Thai fails, and it greatly outnumbers the times it succeeds. And I'm just going to explain to you why it's not uh, ideal for self-defense. And then I'm going to pretty much break it down. Um, you know, and all the flaws and stuff. So here we have one case of a Muay Thai fighter who, who's from Brazil. It says... My name is Ignacio Vargas. I'm from, um, can't pronounce that word, Maceo, Brazil. And before telling you about my situation, I want to apologize for my English. Hope you can understand what I'm writing. Um, I am Fa Fauxa Preta in BJJ. Practiced boxing and Muay Thai for three years before this incident happened. I am 1,085 meters in height, weigh 100 kilos. I was fired from my job, and a friend got me a job as a security guard in the club. The first night, some guys began to throw a bottle to us because we denied them the entrance to the club. From those guys, two came to fight us. I kicked one in the leg, and he fell, and the other guy went after me, so my first instinct was to do what I practiced every class in Muay Thai lessons. I went for the clinch to hit him with the knees. When I had him in the clinch against the wall, he stabbed me in my back twice with a knife he had in his pocket and then ran away. I was carried to a hospital with an ambulance and after surgery, I lost my right lung and spent three months inside the hospital. Now I can't train anymore and have problems to breathe once in a while. But at least I'm alive. I suffer this because the people who trained me made me believe that there was no difference between fighting in a ring and fighting in the streets. I have a false sense of strength that almost got me killed. When I argued with my Muay Thai instructor about this, he told me that it was my fault because in a street fight you never have to clinch. But never told me about this when I was training, only told me now because I reprimanded him. If you fight in a real situation, take care of yourself and don't be naive as me or it's going to cost you goodbye. So as you can see there, you know, um, he got somebody in a clinch and the closer you get to somebody, um, the less room you have to respond to a possible weapon attack and and the less vision you have of uh, someone pulling out a weapon or, or something of that sort um, and they don't train they don't train you to deal with that stuff in Muay Thai or in any combat sport um, and the ins if you bring it up to the instructor a lot of these guys they're not going to take responsibility for what happens to you they're going to deflect the blame on you or or something like that. Uh, so it's a defense mechanism. So you have to think, you have to know the difference between self-defense and um, ring fighting. Um, so 
yeah, I hope you learned a valuable lesson there. And we're going to the next one. Muay Thai world champion shot six times as two gunmen launched an attack at a restaurant. The athlete was taken to intensive care after he was targeted by two gunmen as he ate dinner in a restaurant in Russia. Muay Thai champion shot six times by two gunmen as he ate dinner at a restaurant in Russia. Uh, he tried to discharge himself from intensive care despite being severely injured in the shootout. Um, this was captured on camera. Yeah, here's the gunman. As they leave the restaurant. Despite the fact that his condition was still seri serious, he reportedly refused further treatment and attempted to discharge himself. An eyewitness told media his behavior is very irrational. He pushed door doctors away, saying that he needed to make an urgent phone call. Said he needed to leave the hospital as soon as possible. Here you have people running after shots were fired. Then, after that, he ran out of the intensive care unit, but was stopped by staff and security who told him that extensive injuries to his lungs and intense intestines meant that he needed to uh, at least more four days intensive care there he is right there um, yeah so we don't really know why he he's uh why he was rushing to get out of the hospital um, but yeah um, as you know as you can see um you know as you can see pretty much um Muay Thai is definitely not going to prepare you for two gunmen coming at you and firing at a distance um so that pretty much nullifies your hand to hand combat skills um especially when you're up against two armed attackers. We're going to the next one. Um, British kickboxer is on the run from the law in Thailand after he allegedly stabbed a U.S. Marine to death after a brawl, bar brawl last week. Fugitive Lee Aldhouse is believed to be hiding in the popular tourist destination uh, where the incident took place. Police have sent a photo of him and a copy of his passport to every immigration checkpoint. We're doing everything we can to stop this guy from leaving the country, but there are chances that he might have slipped through neighbor countries, other small islands. Aldhouse and the American Deshaun Longfellow began to quarrel at Freedom Bar. Um, when Longfellow headed towards the men's room, Aldhouse followed him and a fight ensued outside the restroom with the American punching the Briton to the floor before the men were separated. Both men were trained kickboxers at Efton, the popular lo local Muay Thai style. Um, it was simply a fight between two bad-tempered young men and both were good at Muay Thai and things got out of hand. When Longfellow and his Thai girlfriend returned to his rental home, a host came from behind and fatally stabbed Longfellow. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much Muay Thai failed in that situation. Um, and it doesn't really teach you how to um, verbally de-escalate a situation, how to calm people down. You know, he had his back turned, so that's pretty much a lack of situational awareness training. You never turn your back on your attacker, um, especially if you haven't de-escalated the tension in the situation. Uh, so, yeah, this next one. Darren Till tells the story of the time he was almost stabbed to death in Liverpool. Roughly six years ago, UFC 
welterweight Darren Till was nearly stabbed to death during a fight inside a nightclub. Um, there was an incident when in the club. He said, I was trained hard in the gym but didn't have much focus. My focus on other things I will. I was in a club and a fight broke out. I was in the mix of it. Someone stabbed me in the back twice. Um, someone stabbed me in my lungs twice, a millimeter away from an artery. The UFC doctor actually, he was at the hospital in a Liverpool at the time, and he came to me when I woke up and said, listen, you nearly died. I stayed in the hospital for two weeks, just recovery time alone, thinking, wow, that could have been it. I sort of accepted it outside the club as well. I never said this, but I was outside the club. As someone's got their fingers stuck in my wound, I'm sort of thinking, this is it, I might die here. It was this harrowing incident that ultimately led to Till relocating to Brazil, where he lived for three years. He did so under the advice of his coach, who felt the change of scenery would help him focus. Them type of moments, you sort of sit back and think, that was a close call, Till. Then you speak to people who I look up to like a god, like my coach. He said, listen, you either want to be a world champion or you want to be a waster in life. There's plenty of them about it in life. There's not many champions. Um, so, yeah, again, um, you can see Muay Thai, again, failed to prepare you for... Um, Situational awareness, you know, who's who's uh, who's behind you, who's around you, stuff like that. I mean, you don't, you don't have to worry about in that in the ring because you're only facing one person. Next case. George Barker murder. First picture of young father stabbed to death at gym run. Um. George Barker, 24, was killed by a group of men in South London days after his partner gave birth to a baby girl. Gang arrived at the gym in Bexley on Monday morning before launching the attack. One said the victim screamed for help as he lay dying in the arms of a woman. His mother, Julie, and her sons said her son's partner, CJ, had given birth a few days before his death and they were due to register uh, named this week. She said, I need to find the people that did it. They all sat on him. His friend was with him. Um, never was in trouble. Went to the gym. Never came back. Um, the attack took place shortly before a Thai boxing class was due to a start at, a, at the Double K gym in Stable Lane. Um, it's based on a corrugated iron hut and run by Kieran Kettle, a former Thai boxing champion who trained Luther Star Elba for his debut kickboxing bout last month. Police said they were called at 9.40 a.m. after reports of a stabbing. Officers and paramedics found Mr. Barker suffering critical injuries. He died at the scene a short time later. Gym owner came running in asking for bandages to stem the flow of bleeding. We were told a group came in and attacked the guy having in a matter of seconds. A cordon has been set up and officers are carrying out searches. My daughter was outside and heard a man desperately screaming, help, help. A woman who was with him was trying to help, saying, don't worry, someone is coming. Attack came out of nowhere. Everything was normal. Lads had turned up for a class. Then there was blood everywhere. So yeah, um, it's very quick. You can die very quickly. Um, in Muay Thai, you know, you don't have to worry about that because the time is... The rules are pretty much set up. So nobody... Nobody... Uh, you know, stuff like that doesn't happen. Nobody gets hurt that severely. Um, the rules are meant to prolong the fight and pretty much um, 
entertain the crowd, basically. So, uh, there's no deaths involved in Muay Thai fights, although it does happen accidentally. But in this case, it was clearly intentional, so, um, and it wasn't a fair fight at all. So, you know, you've got to keep those things in mind. Next case. Young stabbing suspect in San Diego was well liked. El Cajon Khalif, a 10 year old boy who was suspected of fatally stabbing a close friend, got along well with the other children in this uh, night tight knit neighborhood. Despite struggling to control his anger and could occasionally exploding into violent fits. Um. Yeah, so pretty much um, oh, this is the wrong case. Okay, forget about that one. Um, let's go to another one. See, writing in a message of condolence to Yvonne Mansell, acting security general for Scala International Headquarters, regarding the death of Mrs. Smith while she was on a travel agent familiarization trip to Thailand. Mr. Wood said the tragic events recently have sent shockwaves throughout the tourism industry here in Thailand and overseas. Our heartfelt condolences go out to our family and friends. Um, yeah. In addition to the killing of Mrs. Smith, two Canadian sisters were found dead in mysterious circumstances on Phi Phi Island. British tourist was hospitalized after being slashed by youths the same night. Australian Muay Thai fighter is badly hurt in what his parents believe was a brutal robbery. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like I said in my other video, um, just because people are out to rob you doesn't mean they're going to hurt, they're not going to hurt you. You know, some people, they like to hurt you before they rob you. And uh, in some cases, you know, in you know, actually a lot of cases, Muay Thai is not going to help you with that. Let's see. Kickboxer beaten up by 12 angry men in a hotel. 23-year-old 23, 23 victim says accused mistook him for someone who raised a complaint against them. Hotel manager maintains that the martial artist is to be blamed. Samith Rajamani, a 23-year-old expert in Muay Thai, won several international events learn the hard way that no amount of martial arts training helps when you are swarmed by attackers when 12 men turned on him a helpless rajamani ended up taking the bashing allegedly around 40 slaps and a barrage of punches to all parts of his body the alleged fight is said to have happened during the wee hours of monday at hotel corporate park inn in jala darshini layout opposite of ms Ra. Mayo Hospital. He and his two friends booked a room at Hotel Corporate Park Inn to watch an IPL match on Sunday night. Suddenly, the accused, who were in the neighboring room, allegedly barged into his room and attacked him for complaining to the reception about the noise they were creating. He said to have clarified there was no complaint to the hospital reception from their side. Told police that they had booked a room to watch an IPL match. He had allegedly that past midnight a group of 12 men barged into his room demanding to know what made him and his friends complain about their answers reception about creating nauseans, nausean, can't pronounce that, uh, claiming that they never complained to anybody. He asked the 12 men to leave his room following the heated arguments of 12, including two named Anel and Sandeep are alleged to have attacked him with beer bottles and a mirror kept in the room. 
martial arts expert has further alleged that he was slapped over 40 times and beaten all over his body. He was finally rescued by his friends. Um, they said that he, they blame, uh, Yeah, basically, um, he was causing a ruckus, and and uh, they told him to keep it down, and they threatened him. He didn't, so they came in and jumped him. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and who knows how large the apartment was. It probably was pretty small or or not, you know, the whole, or who knows. Um, you know, obviously with 12 people in there, there's no way that you're going to have um, enough room to do all your Muay Thai training and whatnot and all that stuff. So, um, and it's not even in the training you know, dealing with multiple attackers. So, that's some things that you got to keep in mind. Um, then we have Alex Gong, world champion of ISCA World Muay Thai Junior Middleweight Class, won his world title in 1999, defended his title 2000, held a 2-0-0 zero, zero record in K1, um, including a win over Dwayne Ludwig. On August 2003, after a hit-and-run driver crashed into Gong's parked car in the Fairtex gym parking lot in San Francisco, Gong pursued the car on foot. Gong caught up and confronted the driver who was still in his car at a nearby intersection. Witnesses say the driver then shot Gong at point-blank range and fled in his vehicle. Gong was pronounced dead at the scene. So, uh, yeah, as you can see there, um, you know, Muay Thai pretty much, in summary, conditions you to fight. And uh, in a real-life situ uh, self-defense situation, that can pretty much get you killed because you don't know who you're dealing with. You know, attacks are rarely fights. It's like I said before. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I hope you reflect on that and and realize all the stuff that I told you. Um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want to learn realistic self-defense and maybe you want to learn... Uh, you know, how to adapt uh, some Muay Thai skills for self-defense, then check out my Fiber Gink below. It's at a very affordable price. Um, free lesson is available if you request it. Just let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next week.